Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Hollywood Memories. I'm Dan Roberts, publisher of The Vegas Voice, and my great job is to co-host with my favorite columnist, and that is Beverly Washburn. Beverly, as always, I'm glad you're here. Thank <laughs> you. I'm so happy to be here, and thanks to all of you for watching. We're going to do something different in this episode, and it's part of Beverly's many, many men in her life. <laughs> and this is with a one TV show that I'm sure everybody remembers, and that was the TV show called Wagon Train. Talk a little bit about just in general Wagon Train. How were you on it? And well, I was fortunate in that I did three episodes. I did the pilot with Ernest Borgnine, and I'm hoping that maybe down the road we can do a segment on him because he was one of the nicest men ever lived. He was incredible. Another man in your life, but go ahead. Yes. And, then? and then I did one with Lou Costello. Right. And then the third one was with Lorraine Day. And we're going to go through that very slowly, but in Wagon Train, the wagon master was... Ward Bond. Talk a little bit about Ward Bond, because the story you tell me, I think, is just fascinating. <laughs> well, Ward Bond was what you'd call a man's man. He was uh, kind of rough around the edges, but deep down he was a, a gentle, sweet guy. But he had a habit of swearing a lot, and he didn't mean to, but I was a minor. And so when you're a minor, uh, they have uh, on the set what's called a welfare worker. Right. They're actually a certified um, school teacher from the Los Angeles Board of Education. They refer to them as welfare workers because they're there for the child's welfare, meaning that they have to have three hours of schooling, they have to have 20 minute breaks, they have to have an hour lunch, they can't do overtime, and all that kind of stuff. So. And the welfare worker that you had caught him swearing and she can do. She did what, and what power did she have over the TV set? She had or the series. Well, she had complete control over the minors on the set and the authority to do anything. So, because Ward Bond kept swearing, and he didn't mean to, you know, he was used to being around a lot of guys, and so the F word would just come rolling out of his mouth. I was so young, I didn't even know what it meant, so it didn't bother me, but it bothered the welfare worker. So she went up to the director and said, if he uses one more swear word on the set, I'm pulling her off. And she had the authority to do that. And there was nothing the director or the team, <coughs> nothing anybody can do. If she said, you're out of there, you're out of there. Absolutely. She had that much authority over the children that worked. And as you mentioned, you weren't offended by the language? Well, I didn't even know what it meant, so it didn't bother me, but it bothered her. Yeah. And so he didn't even realize he was doing it. So, of course, you know, after they spoke to him, he came over and apologized profusely, and he never even said darn after that. And did he apologize to you also? Oh, yeah, to me, absolutely. And, and did you realize what you apologized no. for? No, <laughs> <laughs> but he was such a dear man. Sadly, he passed away at the age of 57. Yeah. And as you probably know, he was dear friends with John Wayne. Your best friends. And yes, and John uh, Wayne said the, uh, the eulogy at Ward Bonds. And, and again, we have a photo of the autograph that he gave you. He, he was just extremely nice to you, I assume? He was a wonderful man. So despite how tough he sounded and the language, like he's from the Bronx, he was really a, a nice guy. He was there. a terrific guy, yeah. I felt very fortunate to work with him. And of course, I cherish the photo that he autographed to me. But as I've spoken before and written in my column, I was too young at the time no. to realize how wonderful it was to work with you know, so many of these legends and actors. And it wasn't until I became an adult that I realized just what a blessing it really was, because I didn't get it when I was that young. You didn't get it. And yet, the second episode you did was written by someone else that's very, that was very famous, and that was Harry Von Zell. And he was famous for? He was the announcer on the old Burns and Allen show. And yes, he wrote the episode and he was also in it. The one with Lou Costello was called The Tobias Jones Story, and it's available on YouTube, I believe. Okay. And that means, now let's get to the third part, which, again, that, that part <laughs> I, I remember, is that you worked with Lou Costello. 
I know. Without Abbott. I know. It, it was the only dramatic role that he ever did, and he was amazing. And he was so used to ad-libbing when they did Abbott and Costello because he had free reign. But on this show, he had to stick to the script, which was very difficult for him. And let's go, wait, let's go into the fact, what was the story about? Because I still like that story. <laughs> well, now this is back in the 50s, uh, don't yeah. forget. Um, he plays a drifter, and I'm a runaway orphan. And so we travel together on the wagon train, and we're stowaways. And so we're kind of hiding, and then we get caught, and it turns out that he's also an alcoholic. And there's a murder, and of course they think that he did it, and then there's the whole story about that. Well, it's about that. So if I understand this, as a little girl, you get to stay with a drifter <laughs> and an alcoholic, and yet the welfare worker had no problem with that at all. Is that correct? <laughs> I know, it's kind of funny looking back because in today's world, it would be totally inappropriate for a little girl to be traveling with a man. But, right. you know, this was a long time ago and things were a lot more innocent back then. People didn't think twice about it. Well, let's go with now Lou Costello. How was he working with him? Oh my gosh, Dan, honestly, and I know I, I say this about a lot of people, but from my heart, I have to say he was one of the nicest people I have ever met in my whole life, and it was such an honor. And at the time, I had been an Abbott and Costello fan, so I did know mm -hmm. who he was, and it was such a thrill, and he was just so nice to me, and I just I just treasure every moment that I got to spend with him. And, and yet, again, he did a dramatic role. There were times where he just couldn't get his lines straight. <laughs> Right? right, because he was so used to ad-libbing, and it was so cute then, because he would always just stop, and instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry, or whatever, he would look right into the camera, and he would just go, so how are ya? Yeah. And he did that every time, and sometimes, and I would always crack up. So I think sometimes he almost did it intentionally to make me laugh. And as a little girl working with Lou Costello, I mean, you were professional. I mean, you knew your lines, you, uh, you knew what, what was going on. Did it ever frustrate you when you're doing a scene and he, he blew the line? No, because he would always be so funny when he did it, because that you know he'd always look into the camera and say that, and then we'd all laugh. and So it was just such a joy to work with him. And, and again, uh, we're going to show on the screen, he sent you a postcard after, which, which I, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was just beautiful, wasn't Thank it? Thank you. I know. I, I cherish it. I have it framed and um, put in my house. Yeah. And so the whole experience of wagon train, you would say, was what fun, enjoyable, professional, working. All of the above. It was it was one of my favorite roles that I ever did. It was a, quite a, a good role for me because they think that he is the murderer, and of course I know that he didn't do it. So there's the big crying scene and all that, knowing that they're about to hang him. So it, it's quite dramatic, and he was so good. People were just so shocked that here he is, this fabulous comedian, and yet he pulled off this wonderful dramatic role. He was wonderful. And when, when he did these roles, I mean, one of your claim to fame was that you were very good at crying. <laughs> right? You can cry at a moment's notice. Well, I cry at supermarket openings. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you were able to cry. and. Was Lou Costello, let's say, shocked at your expertise or just, oh my God, look at this little girl doing it. Well, as you know, what he wrote to me was that he'd heard from other people. It was just so right. sweet what he said. So, no, he wasn't shocked. We just, I don't know, we just had this wonderful rapport. We just got along so well. Just the nicest man ever. And I just am so grateful for having worked with him and met him and have him in my life. You know, and, and one other quick story. What I did when I did the research, down the road, a gentleman by the name of Gene Roddenberry actually used the idea of Wagon Train for his future TV show called... Star Trek. And <laughs> just to show you how Beverly had all these men in her life, you ended up doing a Star Trek. I know. Is, it, isn't is that it, something that went full circle? I know. I'm so grateful. It, and again, we're going to have this and, and a lot more information with Beverly. But you know what? If you really want to get information about Beverly and you want to read about her fantastic career, there's a book, Real Tears. How do you go about getting one of these? It's books? available on Amazon. Right. And if people were to... 
purchase it if, and if they're kind enough to buy it and have it sent to the Vegas Voice, I would be more than happy to sign it at no charge. And, and I know you've done it because I keep on getting all the mail for thank that. You. So again, I, I thank you as always for allowing me to be with you. Oh, Dan, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for allowing me to share all my memories with you and the people that are watching. So thanks again for tuning in. And we're going to have a lot more down the road. Until then, this is Dan Roberts with Beverly Washburn saying we'll see you again real soon.